This is Steve Zeltzer with Workweek, and I'm talking today with Roberto Luzzi. He is with the COBAS International Solidarity Committee and has been involved in a struggle with the FedEx, Amazon, other workers who are trying to organize in Italy and have been met with a massive police assault government attack. So welcome to our program, Roberto. Hi, I'm glad to see you and be with you. So maybe you can explain what has been going on with the organizing of the workers, who's organizing, uh, how uh, this organizing has been met by the government and the role of these companies, FedEx, Amazon, and other companies that are in Italy. Yes, um, I'm doing work with uh, CICOBAS, which is a grassroots union uh, organizing mainly immigrant workers in Italy and uh, in the, mainly in the logistics sector, but also in other sectors. And uh, these workers uh, uh, were uh, treated almost uh, like slaves uh, with the long, long hours, uh, uh, very low pay, and uh, also abused by uh, <clears throat> by foremen and bosses and so on. And so, uh, but as soon as they uh, can organize, uh, then they have made uh, big strikes uh, in, and uh, uh, after 10 years of organizing in most uh, of uh, Italy's regions, uh, uh, our union has, uh, organized the majority of uh, logistic workers in all uh, the main companies, among which uh, uh, also multinationals like uh, um, DHL, GLS, uh, and uh, TNT, which has been uh, bought uh, by FedEx uh, in uh, 2016. Now, uh, FedEx uh, is uh, restructuring uh, its uh, European uh, network and uh, plans to reduce uh, uh, 6,300 uh, workers to, uh, to fire uh, 650,000 workers, starting from Belgium, but also in Italy, we have a uh, uh, signs that uh, it is going to cut the workforce and uh, so we have already made uh, strikes uh, in last summer uh, to uh, defend uh, the jobs uh, of uh, workers uh, in Milan. Um, now in Piacenza there was a, um, a dispute about uh, wages and uh, also about uh, job security and uh, workers uh, have been striking for uh, 13 days uh, in the last two weeks of January and uh, on the February the first uh, the police came about 100 policemen and uh, they attacked uh, the picket the picket line uh, with the tear gas and uh, clubs. Uh, but uh, workers, uh, unlike uh, what usually happens, resisted also because the workers from nearby warehouses came to their help. And uh, so after two days, uh, an agreement was reached. Uh, in, in Piacenza with the wage, uh, wage an agreement on wages and uh, also uh, an agreement uh, on uh, preserving uh, jobs in the warehouse even though we know they are uh, playing with words because uh, they are not uh, employing workers directly but through uh, subcontractors and so uh, probably they mean they guarantee 
jobs for worker for uh, FedEx uh, employees, uh, but uh, uh, they are trying to reduce uh, the workforce, which is about 90% of the workforce uh, is hired by contractors. So this is still to be seen. And uh, but what happened uh, that uh, after this agreement uh, on March uh, the 10th, after Sikova's workers held a, a demonstration uh, near uh, the Amazon uh, warehouse in near Piacenza, after a woman had been a woman worker had been abused uh, by uh, its um, bosses. Uh, and 8 March was Women's Worker Women's Day. After this, uh, probably also Amazon was uh, uh, about uh, worried about the possible entering of uh, this uh, uh, militant union in its uh, main warehouse in uh, Italy. And uh, uh, on the 10th of March, uh, there was a raid by police in the homes of uh, 21 workers and organizers of uh, FedEx, uh, uh, Sicovas uh, in Piacenza. Uh, two organizer were, organizer were put uh, to house arrest, they can't talk, uh, see uh, nobody. Uh, five workers uh, were. Uh, um, it's a some. It's a law that uh, was made by the fascist uh, regime, but they still uh, being used. Uh, they were forbidden uh, from putting their feet. Uh, on the municipality of Piacenza. So they have to leave their homes and cannot go to work. So we are helping them to stay in a hotel, but they have to leave their families in their homes. And six workers uh, were uh, told that the procedure to um, take away uh, their uh, residence permit were being started. This uh, on the basis uh, of a security decree made by the Salvini and the mm, government of three years ago, but which has not been changed now. So this uh, tries to terrorize workers because if you fight for your rights, then you can be sent back to your country, even if you are living, have been living here for 10, 20 years, and your family is here, your children have been have been born here, and so on. So this is a very uh, ugly attack against uh, your, our uh, union and uh, against workers' struggles, and. Uh, we know that this is an attack waged by the government, the ministry, the interior ministry, uh, and in agreement also with the parts uh, of the judiciary. Uh, they are saying that this was not a trade union struggle, even if uh, we have signed, uh, after our strikes, we have signed, always signed uh, agreements with the with the companies we so we can show that uh, we have done trade union uh, activity and uh, but they are trying almost to outlaw uh, our union and uh, the way the struggles we have been wages yes this is the situation and your union is uh, uh, a rank and file union uh, organized from the from the base up. What does that mean? Because in the United States, workers are also trying to organize at Amazon, uh, at uh, Bessemer, and they face massive repression as well. Uh, you know, a firing of organizers, a firing of workers who support the union. Uh, how is your union organized, and how has it been able to 
organize uh, FedEx and other uh, uh, workers in the uh, logistics industry? Uh, well, uh, we have organized, uh, we have helped workers to organize uh, without uh, making any uh, organization uh, planning because it's always workers coming to us and asking to be organized after they see that uh, some of their um, other people from their communities have uh, won uh, improvements in their on their jobs uh, have uh, uh, can, can you hear me because yes, yes we can hear you yeah. uh, and so they come and uh, we organize them many times we have to be very careful because uh, if uh, just a few workers uh, uh, join our union then they could be fired many times uh, as soon as they join our union so uh, you have to uh, make larger groups uh, so they can resist mm, the laws uh, in italy make it easier than in the us to organize a union because you don't need to have a majority of workers to be uh, to be represented and uh, you can start to strike uh, even if uh, uh, you don't have a majority many times uh, the majority is won after the strike is started because if they see that there is a hard core that uh, uh, that uh, is doing the strike then also those who are more hesitant will join it and yes so mm, this movement has spread uh, from the area in milan to all uh, regions of italy yeah you say mostly immigrant workers a large number of immigrant workers and that is the case as well as in the united states uh, immigrant workers are uh, used in these uh, Amazon, other other industries like that, other companies. Um, what has been the response of the rest of the trade union movement in Italy uh, to this uh, attack on on these uh, unionists, these workers? Well, we've had uh, support uh, from some other uh, rank and file unions, uh, but not uh, from the mainstream. Uh, or official unions, uh, even the, the public prosecutor uh, said that uh, ours is not a real union, real unions are those like uh, official unions who uh, collaborate with the government uh, and uh, um, reach agreements, uh, many times uh, backward agreements, uh, uh, with companies without strikes and so on. Uh, but uh, most of all, uh, we've had the uh, largest support uh, from uh, many uh, rank and file movements, uh, also not union movements. Uh, we organized uh, um, on Saturday uh, 13, uh, um, demonstration in Piacenza, uh, which uh, was rather large for uh, Italian standards, and uh, it showed uh, a great uh, solidarity. And uh, um, there is also a network uh, now supporting uh, this struggle. But FedEx, uh, uh, after we made uh, a strike uh, in response uh, to this attack, uh, FedEx. Uh, has emptied the warehouse in Piacenza. Uh, so it has moved uh, all uh, um, the, the, the goods uh, that uh, usually would go to Piacenza to other warehouses. So we had to make strikes also in these warehouses uh, to not to um, process uh, the, the, the goods uh, that uh, were meant for Piacenza. And so the struggle has become also a national struggle against FedEx. 
that has closed the, the, the warehouse in Piacenza. So they are leading workers, have been leaving workers without work for almost two weeks. Uh, now we have news that probably work will resume and that uh, one subcontractor, which is in Piacenza, uh, is uh, willing to apply the agreement that uh, has been signed. So, And the, the issue of uh, the rise of fascism, there's been uh, increasing attacks on immigrants in the United States, whipped up by Trump. What is the role of uh, the rise of fascism in Italy and the United States in, in Italy? Because FedEx, of course, is an American-owned company. Yes. Um, well, about FedEx, uh, I can say that uh, uh, it has broken uh, an association of employers, of the main employers in the logistics sector, which have signed uh, three national agreements with our union because the majority of workers are uh, uh, with our union. Uh, but FedEx has broken uh, with uh, that association and therefore also with those agreements that we made. So it's trying the hard line, like, but the same did the Fiat after uh, joining with Chrysler. So it's an anti-union anti -union, uh, stance. Uh, fascists have uh, little say now in Italy, even though the, the league, the Northern League, which now it's just the league, is uh, fascist-like, has fascist-like uh, policy. Yes, and now it is in the government, in the new government, the Draghi government, uh, from uh, the Democratic Party to the League uh, are supporting it. So we think that uh, this is also the line of this government because uh, it plans to uh, facilitate uh, uh, concentration in the uh, in industry and in business in general, and concentration will mean to close uh, many workplaces and uh, also fire workers. So they, it's some preventive uh, move uh, to prevent uh, struggles against uh, this restructuring that uh, will come. And this pandemic uh, has obviously uh, been used by the capitalists, the billionaires, to increase their wealth. It's affected uh, small business people. It's affected working class people. Uh, how has the pandemic affected Italy? And uh, how has uh, the capitalists used it to their advantage? Uh, well, the uh, pandemic uh, had a big uh, a uh, heavy effect uh, in, in Italy. As you know, Italy was one of the first uh, countries that were uh, hit uh, by these pandemics. We had a mm, very strong uh, um, contagion, um, especially in our region, Lombardy. And, uh, in uh, Bergamo, in the province of Bergamo, where uh, uh, businesses uh, ma made the lobbying on uh, on uh, administrations not to close uh, uh, all activities, and so we had uh, the, the the big biggest uh, center of uh, um, infection worldwide for uh, a few weeks. Uh, so it was very heavy. And uh, it showed how uh, capitalist interests uh, were playing against life uh, because thousands and thousands of people died. Uh, and uh, we uh, have, uh, as a union, 
uh, we have organized uh, uh, what we call the, not strikes, but abstention from work. There is a law that uh, we used that uh, if uh, your life is in danger, then you can, uh, you have the right not to uh, work. Uh, and this until uh, measures were introduced uh, to uh, make uh, workplaces safer. But uh, it is uh, not just the problem of workplaces, but also of transport, because if you have to use uh, public transport, trains, buses to go to work, uh, then it's uh, very dangerous. And uh, so we have uh, been keeping pressure on uh, uh, companies uh, to implement uh, uh, stricter measures than uh, provide those provided by the agreement because gover between government and uh, unions. Uh, so it has been, but not always workers have uh, understood uh, the seriousness of the problem, or maybe sometimes uh, they were just in need uh, for uh, money. And uh, so they were willing to risk their lives. And uh, we had uh, a few dozen workers who died because of uh, COVID-19 also among our members. The issue of privatization of healthcare, I understand that some regions in Italy have privatized their healthcare and that's one of the reasons the, the, uh, the high level of uh, uh, deaths and, and uh, COVID uh, contamination in those regions. Maybe you can talk about that, the role of privatization in your healthcare system. Yes, uh, well, we can say that in the whole of Italy, there has been a privatization of healthcare because privatization is not only uh, private companies uh, using, uh, um, entering this sector like a business, but uh, it has also been introduced uh, inside the public health system because uh, um, the, the target of their activity has become profit because it, the problem is not no more uh, healing uh, uh, people, but it has become uh, the red line, the bottom line, uh, the bottom line of, uh, and uh, besides this, uh, so uh, besides this, uh, um, another reason is that uh, there was a, a network of, uh, how can you say, community um, healthcare that were, so that uh, people could be followed uh, almost in their homes. But this couldn't make profit. This doesn't make any profit. So it has been dismantled. It has been, and this is also why uh, Italy hasn't been able to check the spread of the infection in, in the territory. And so, but uh, uh, while uh, if you take uh, people who are already sick uh, and you take them to a hospital or to a private uh, hospital, then you can profit on it. So prevention is not profitable, but uh, it would cost much less than <laughs> uh, having people already sick. This not only for COVID, but in general, yes. And how can American workers support the workers in, in Italy who are, who are facing attacks uh, and uh, at FedEx and also the role of Amazon? What can you, uh, US workers do to support your struggle? Well, uh, it's not easy because uh, I know that uh, FedEx uh, is an very, has an anti-union policy 
and uh, in the US, uh, it has prevented uh, unions from organizing, uh, except for uh, some small uh, warehouse, but uh, in general, it's a no union company. So it would be difficult uh, for, uh, we would like to be able to help uh, FedEx workers in the US uh, to organize. And uh, if we can do something for it, uh, we would do it uh, very uh, willingly, yes. Okay, well, I want to thank uh, while, uh, while I think that uh, we can try to, and maybe you can help, um, try to establish uh, um, connections uh, with the other logistic uh, workers in the US, um, because uh, we should be able to act uh, internationally because they do act internationally. So uh, maybe we, we can talk about it uh, later. And uh, we are also intervening now in some ports like Naples. Uh, I know in California, uh, dock workers are uh, very, militant and uh, organized so and and internationalism today uh you have global capitalism which uh, is at war with workers uh the capitals around the world want to uh, de-unionize and, and destroy unions you think that there's going to be growing internationalism of the working class where workers around the world see their struggle as directly tied to the struggle of workers internationally this is a very important uh, issue we are organizing on uh, the 2nd of May, an international uh, meeting between uh, combative workers. Uh, and uh, it would be important if some uh, workers from the US could uh, uh, connect uh, to this and speak to this conference and start uh, uh, organizing a, a, a network that we are already as a union in an international network of solidarity and struggle, but uh, uh, it has, hasn't been able to organize uh, real initiatives, only solidarity statements and uh, uh, so if uh, we can build uh, something that also has a uh, uh, force to put together, then it would be great. But we can start to have a common platform and uh, uh, make, uh, yes, the more enlarge uh, this uh, international network. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us on Warp Week and Pacifica. We've been talking with Roberto Luzzi, who's a, an organizer and has been fighting to defend workers in logistics, FedEx, and other companies that are uh, trying to organize unions, are organizing unions, and are now facing a very uh, a repressive attack on their democratic worker rights uh, in Italy. So thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me.